Boys Trophy ay para sa best children's show. Abi ko ay ihahanda ang BBM BC member Alan Santoy. The star of our best children's show goes to... Tayo sa Tarmi! Ay BC Trophy! In these extraordinary times, we continue being creative despite the uncertainty. Everyone around the world, including the entertainment industry, are adapting to the new normal. Many breaking down barriers to show their works and find a new creative ways. We've been through a lot, but the dreams of each and everyone in our show inspire us to keep moving forward. Thank you for this award for making our dreams come true. Thank you, Emily Fodder, for this back-to-back -back award. This is so special. TMPC, thank you very much. To our home network, IBC13, my solid family, Talents Academy, my whole production team, especially to my assistant director, Justin Miguel, and to my master editor, Arkin Bruno. To all my cast and their supportive parents, and everyone who stayed with us in this pandemic, maraming maraming salamat po. Let us continue to make impossible things to possible and rise above the uncertainties. So, Marjan na ang nagaling po mag-host presenting the trophy for best children show host is PMPC member Emily Piao. And the star goes to Anastasia Paronda, Candice Ayesha Paronda, Manny Singo, Grace and Joy Simenez, Cedric Galilon, from Science Academy, IBC Today is a very special occasion where we bring together the entertainment world to celebrate the achievements of everyone. Despite the fact that we cannot physically come together this year, we rejoice with our families, fellow parties, everyone in the production, and all who have contributed to their success through this online awards night. We are never too small to dream. We have found our boss and a result of the coronavirus has changed how we work, play, and learn. The pandemic has brought plenty of both to the world, but it's also been leading us to better times. Know that you are never too small to dream and make a difference. Thank you, Direct John Miguel. Thank you, IBC 13. Thank
Tama nating pagsisikap Sama-sama rin mararating Ang iba't ibang galaw Iisang patutunguhan Dito isang araw Isang kapuluan
dakilang lahi na sa yung tangi pag-ibig kong walang hanggan isinumpa ko o Pilipino gagaling ang sugat ng yung naka nang pahiran ko luha ng puso ko ay natayo muli ang karanganan mo o ang pag-ibig ko sa'yo Walang hanggan, ikaw ang siyang dalangin ko. Sa Diyos kailan pa ma, kuminang na ang bituin. At sumikat ng araw, ang kalayaan mo'y sinisigaw ang bukas. Ay tanging sa'yo na kalaw. Manggi ang kulay mo Tugot pawis Inalay mo Di ka na mabi Ngayon o kailanman Pag-ibig ko sa'yo Walang hanggan Dakilang bayan Kapayapaan Nang nakamtan Tulad nung araw Bago inagaw Ang kayamanan mo Ang iyong kalayaan Nang pahiran ko Luha ng puso mo Ay natayo Muli ang karangalan mo O ang pag-ibig ko sa'yo'y walang hanggan Ikaw ang siyang dalangin ko Sa Diyos kailan pa man Kuminang na ang iyong bituin At sumikat na araw Ang kalayaan mo'y sinisigaw Ang bukas ay tanging sa'yo Nakalaan kayo manggi ang kulay mo Tugot pawis kinahal Pag-ibig ko sa'yo'y walang hanggan Kahit na gano kalit ang tinig ko Kung lakas akong magtatanggol sa'yo Oh, 
pag-ibig ko sa'yo walang hanggan Bonifacio Day is a national public holiday every 30th of November to celebrate the birthday of one of the country's greatest heroes, Andres Bonifacio. Born on November 30, 1863, Bonifacio is considered as the father of the Philippine Revolution against Spanish colonization. He, along with some others, started a movement known as the Katipunan in 1892. The Katipunan was a secret revolutionary society that instigates military revolts against the Spanish colonizers. Andres Bonifacio became the Katipunan's military leader and the president of the revolutionary government which according to some historian makes Bonifacio the first president of the Philippines Republic. Bonifacio and the Katipunan recruited many citizens to their cause, eventually becoming the most prominent revolutionary force the Spaniards had to face. However, Bonifacio's leadership was contested by some other and in particular, Emilio Aguinaldo, after a series of leadership challenges and internal rips, Aguinaldo violently took over the revolutionary forces and unjustly ordered Bonifacio to be tried and executed under the guise of treason. Bonifacio Day is held every November 30, unlike the main national hero, Jose Rizal Bonifacio Day is celebrated on his day of birth rather than his day of death. This is because Bonifacio was killed by his fellow countrymen rather than at the hands of foreign colonizers. Since 1901, Bonifacio's birthday has been celebrated by civic organization by 1920, Senator Lope K. Santos filed a bill to declare November 30 to the list of holidays listed at number 2711. In 1921, the Governor-General approved the bill as Act Number 2946. The law did not name Bonifacio and added November 30 to the list of holidays listed at Act Number 2711. Time, it became a holiday to commemorate all Filipino heroes this persisted even when a separate National Heroes Day holiday was declared in 1931. 1942, November 30 was declared as National Heroes Day. In 1952, the Philippines by this time now independent, President Elpidio Quirino separated National Heroes Day and Bonifacio Day by Executive Order. President Carino explained in a speech at the National Teachers College that the change has become necessarily because of the interest 
from different sectors of our country to celebrate each hero's anniversary in order to perpetuate his name. Bonifacio Day ceremonies are usually held at the Bonifacio Monument in Caloocan and is usually led by the incumbent president. Who is Andres Bonifacio? Andres Bonifacio was a leader of the Philippines Revolution and the president of the Tagalog Republic, a short-lived government in the Philippines. Through his work, Bonifacio helped the Philippines break free from Spanish colonial rule. He is known for leader of the Philippine Revolution. Known as Andres Bonifacio Fide Castro. He was born on November 30, 1863 in Tondo, Manila. His parents are Santiago Bonifacio and Catalina de Castro. His father Santiago as a tailor, local politician, and boatman who operated a river ferry. His mother Catalina de Castro was employed in a cigarette rolling factory. The couple were extremely hard support and dress and his five younger siblings. But in 1881, Catalina caught tuberculosis and died. The following year, Santiago also became ill and passed away. At the age of 19, Bonifacio was forced to get a plan for higher education and begin working full time to support his orphan younger siblings. He worked for the British Trading Company, J.M. Fleming and Company, as a broker or corridor for local raw materials such as tar and rattan. He later moved to the German firm Friesel and Company where he worked as a bodyguero or grocer. Andres Bonifacio's tragic family history during his youth seems to have followed him into adulthood. He married twice but had no surviving children at the time of his death. First wife, Monica, came from the Palomar neighborhood of Bacoor. She died young of leprosy. Bonifacio's second wife, Gregoria de Jesus, came from the Caloocan area of Metro Manila. They married when he was 29 and she was just 18. Their only child, a son, died in infancy. In 1892, Bonifacio joined Jose Rizal's organization, La Liga Filipina, which called for reform of the Spanish colonial regime in the Philippines. The group met only once. However, since Spanish officials arrested Rizal immediately after the first meeting and deported him, to the southern island of Mindanao. After Jose Rizal's arrest and deportation, under Bonifacio and others revived La Liga to maintain pressure on the Spanish government to free the Philippines. Along with his friends, Ladislao Diwa and Teodoro Plata, However, he also founded a group called Katipunan. Katipunan or Kataas-taasang Kagalang-galangang Katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan, literally, highest and most respected society of the children of country, was dedicated to arm the resistance against the colonial government. Made up mostly of people from the middle and lower classes, 
Dakatipunan Organization soon established regional branches in a number of provinces across the Philippines. In 1895, Andres Manif Casio became the top leader or president supremo of the Katipunan along with his friend Emilio Jacinto and Peo Valenzuela Bonifacio Bullshit a newspaper called The Kalayaan or Freedom. Under Bonifacio's leadership in 1896, Katipunan grew from about 300 members to more than 30,000. It a militant boots lady. The nation in a multi island network in place. Bonifacio organization was prepared to start fighting for freedom from Spain. Over the summer of 1896, the Spanish colonial government began to realize that the Philippines was on the verge of revolt. On August 19, authorities tried to preempt the uprising by arresting hundreds of people and jailing them under charge of treason. Some of those swept up were involved in the movement, but some of them are not. Among those arrested was Dr. Jose Rizal, who has on a ship in Manila Bay waiting to ship out for service as a military doctor in Cuba. This was part of his plea bargain with the Spanish government in exchange for his release from prison in Mindanao. Andres Bonifacio and two friends dressed up as sailors and they made their way into the ship and they tried to convince Rizal to escape with them, but he refused. He was later put on trial EA Spanish Kangang Court and executed. Andres Bonifacio kicked off the revolt by leading thousands of his followers to tear up their community tax certificates or cedulas. This signaled their refusal to pay any more taxes to the Spanish colonial regime. Bonifacio named himself President and Commander-in-Chief of the Philippines Revolutionary Government declaring the nation's independence from Spain on August 23. He issued a manifesto dated August 28, 1896, calling for all towns to raise and attack Manila and sent generals to lead the rebel force in the offensive. Andres Bonifacio himself led an attack on the town of San Juan del Monte intent on capturing Manila's Metro Water Station and the powder magazine from the Spanish garrison. Thought they were vastly outnumbered that Spanish tops inside managed to hold off Bonifacio forces until reinforcements arrived. Address Bonifacio was forced to withdraw to Marikina, Montalban, and San Mateo. His group suffered heavy casualties. Elsewhere, other Katipunan groups attacked Spanish troops all around Manila. By early September, the revolution was spreading across the country. Aguinaldo's function in Cavite was in competition with a second rebel group headed by uncle of Bonifacio's wife, Gregoria de Jesus, as a more successful military leader and a member of much wealthier, more influenced family, Emilio Aguinaldo felt justified in forming his own rebel government in opposition to Bonifacio's. On March 22, 
1897, Aguinaldo rigid an election at the rebels tell George's co convention to show that he was the proper president of the revolutionary government. To Bonifacio's shame, he not only lost the presidency to Aguinaldo, but was appointed to the lowly post of Secretary of the Interior. When Daniel Tirona questioned his fitness even for that job based on Bonifacio's lack of university education, the humiliated former president pulled out a gun and would have killed Tirona if a bystander had not stopped him. After Emilio Aguinaldo won the rigged election at Tejeros, Andres Bonifacio refused to recognize the new rebel government. Emilio Aguinaldo sent a group to arrest Andres Bonifacio. They shut down his brother Siriaco, seriously beat his brother Procopio. Emilio Aguinaldo had Bonifacio and Procopio tried for treason and sedition. After a one-day sham trial in which the defense lawyer abridged their guilt rather than defending them, both Bonifacios were convicted and sentenced to death. Emilia Aguinaldo commuted the death sentence on May 8 but then reinstated it. On May 10, 1897, both Procopio and Bonifacio were likely shot dead by a firing squad on Nagpato Mountain. Some accounts say that Andres Bonifacio was too weak to stand due to untreated battle wounds and was actually hacked to death in his stretcher. Instead, he was just 34 years old. As the first child declared, President of the Independent Philippines as well as the first leader of the Philippine Revolution. Address Bonifacio is the crucial figure in Filipino history. Address Bonifacio has been handed with a national holiday on his birthday. November 30, his birthday will always be remembered. Ilabas ninyo ang inyong mga sedula! Pagmasdan ninyo ang munting papel na umaalipin sa ating lahat! Katipunan, kailangan na nating wakasan ang ilang daang taong pananakop ng Espanya. Kulang man tayo sa sandata. Mas malakas man ang baril at kanyon ng mga Kastila. Lalaban tayo hanggang sa huling hininga. Hindi tayo magpapalubig! Tayo ang magtatagumpay. Dahil tayo ang mga anak ng bayan! Dandina. 
at sa kanyang yumi at ganda Dayuhan ay nahadina Bayan ko binihag ka Nasadlak sa dusa
Matakot ka sa kasaysayan dahil walang lihim na hindi na ilalahat. Kulang man tayo sa sandata. Mas malakas man ang barel at kanyon ng mga Kastila. Lalaban tayo hanggang sa huling hinga. Pulitin ang mga schedule nyo! Mabuhay ang katipunan! Mabuhay ang revolusyon! Siguraduhin mo bukas na bukas wala na kayo dito at pumarba ka na sa barangay!
magsabi ng congratulations sa Talents Academy for winning the Best Children's Show at the 39th Consumer's Choice Awards. Sana marami pa tayong projects together kasi ang mga batang nasa Talents Academy ay talaga namang napaka-talented and they deserve more exposure. Congratulations! Thank you.